So if we are doing any extra discussion on leases, I don't consider it as a waste of time, okay? Because this is one thing which has significantly changed the accounting scenario and uh, almost every company, all of us are impacted with it, okay? Uh, let me discuss a few things we have been discussing. I think I should have actually recorded the session, the discussion. I just, um, I mean, we discussed a few things. I'm not gonna discuss all of them, but just one concept. This was when you make some you know, advances or you have deposits, which are refundable, which are refundable deposit. Refundable means refundable to the full extent. So for example, you sign a lease contract for five years and you have to make payments of 1 million, you know, every year, 1 million per year, and you have to pay it in areas. So what will happen that your lease contract is here for five years time period, every year you are paying 1 million, 1 million, 1 million, and 1 million, okay? But then they say that there is some deposit, a refundable deposit, which you have to make for 200K to get this contract done. Sometime when we get some properties, we do give some safety deposit, security or deposit so that they see that you don't damage the property. So you have paid something like 0.2K, 0.2 million, like 200,000 you pay here at the beginning. This, you should treat it separately as your advances or your, you know, prepayments or whatever. Because end of the lease contract, you will get back this money. You should not be adding it to the to these lease payments because these lease payments are going to become my right of use asset and right of use asset, I will depreciate and I will make it zero, okay? So this is whatever the, these amounts are, I would depreciate and I would make them zero end of the lease life. But this 200K, I should keep it separate, separate because this money will come back to me in full 200K amount. So this should not be, because if I add it up with this, this will also be depreciated and this will also become zero. Whereas it will not, it should not become zero. It should remain in my balance sheet with 200K so that end of the lease contract, when I give back them, hand over them the keys, I receive back my 200K. So this 200K is not going to be depreciated. If you don't want to depreciate, then do not add into ROU because whatever you will add into ROU, return of right of use asset, that will be depreciated over the life. So this was one important point we discussed. The second thing which you started the discussion and I just, you know, interfere in the middle, Sometimes you make some uh, renovations. It's a very common thing. Uh, and actually, with in terms of renovations, there are a few things which usually they are, they come as a package deal. How do I know that? I actually was part of one of, um, I have seen this thing in uh, practically. I was doing some consulting project and that consulting project was for one hospital. So that was a private hospital. So what they did that there were some plaza or something like a building. And on the ground floor, there were some shops. And then on the top, there were some apartments and there were quite a lot of apartments, okay? Maybe 10, 15 or something like this, maybe even more. But they were like vacant, they were vacant. The location of this thing was very good. And somehow what happened that my client, which for whom I was doing consulting, they got this premises on rent. And what they did, they started removing the walls because these were semi-furnished things. They made it like there were three floors and on three floors, they created a private clinic or a private hospital, you call it. a small one, not the surgical things, they don't offer surgeries, but you know, outdoor clinics, stuff like that. And they spent something like, if I'm not mistaken, something like 4 million on the renovation thing. Now they do not become the owner of the building. The building does not belong to them. They only made $4 million of renovation. And this is, it should be treated as their non-parent asset. Now, when you say leases, so they have a lease of that premises, but on that lease of the premises, they are adding up 4 million in terms of renovation. And then what happens that this renovation was going to go for approximately about one year time period, you know, because all the interiors, fittings, doors, carpeting, electric wiring, and, you know, heavy equipment and generators to provide some non-stop electricity supplies, many things. So for one year, we call it a rent-free period. Whenever you will see such lease arrangements where you have to do renovation, you also get a rent-free period. So rent-free period means that, you know, um, how to say, I'm not going to pay rent for this period because you've got an old building. I am putting money to make it usable. Otherwise, this building is not in, you know, in the uh, usable condition. So I'm spending money. So at least you should give me a rent-free period so that as long as I am making this construction or doing this renovation, I should not be paying rent because I'm not using it. I'm just improving your property. So there was a one year, 12 months rent-free period. And that's a very common agreement, arrangement. And then sometimes they also get reverse premium. In this case, they did not get the reverse premium, but sometimes they do get a reverse premium. So reverse premium is what that you say that, okay, I'm gonna spend 4 million into your property. I will stay here for say 20 years. After 20 years, I will go, but the, your property would be definitely in a better shape than what it is today. So you should also contribute something. So maybe the landlord gives you 1 million in reverse premium. So he gives you 1 million cash because what you did, you said, I'm gonna sign with you a 20 years contract with an annual rent of $1 million, 1 million USD. But the condition is that for the first one year, it is a rent-free thing. I'm not going to pay anything rent and you will pay me 1 million. So how I'm going to calculate the, you know, how to say 
rent amount. What is the effective rent of this thing? So effectively one year is rent free. So you are going to pay 19 years times 1 million. So you are going to pay 19 million. Okay. So let me put it here, 19 million into one, which makes it 19 million. This is the rent you are going to pay. Uh, but then they are giving you 1 million in reverse premium. So you subtract that because this is what is, so your first year, you will not pay anything. You will only pay for 19 years. And out of this 19 years, 1 million he has already given you. So it means that effectively you will pay only 18 million rent. And for how much period you will give it? Your contract is for 20 years. In your books, you will start charging rent from the first year. So because they say that if there is any discount, which you receive, because I'm going to receive 1 million discount. So what I'm, I'm getting, I'm actually getting 2 million in discount. I'm getting 1 million rent-free period and I'm getting 1 million cash. Okay, rent-free period, I'm getting 1 million and 1 million cash. That's why my total cost is 18 million. And this is this 2 million discount. I cannot say that all of that discount is because of one year of occupation. No, this 2 million discount is because of the 20 years of occupation. So you have to spread, spread this discount over the life of the lease contract. So you're actually, your rent would be, if you divide 18 million by 20, it makes me, I think, 900K per year. So the contract says, the contract says that you have 1 million rent. But in your books, your rent expense is going to go 900K. 100K will be the difference. And this 100K in 20 years time will justify that 2 million. That 2 million will be justified. Let me now show you how am I going to make the double entries for that. This is important because you will have uh, rent free periods. You might see reverse premiums. So if I now consider, let me use like Zill thing here. How am I going to treat this thing? I would say debit cash because let's suppose that this is the first day. So 01, 01, 2020, I made this contract. And on the same day, when I made the contract, they gave me 1 million. So this 1 million I received and I should call it lease liability. And this 1 million should come to lease liability. Okay. Uh, then what happens on 31st of December, <clears throat> 2020, my first rent payment is due but I'm not going to give them. So I would say debit lease rent and credit lease liability. So how much rent I calculated? We said that we are going to pay total 18 million, 18 million over a period of 20 years. It means that 900K is my effective rent. My contract says 1 million cash. I have to give them 1 million, but for me, the expense is only 900K. So I would put here 900K and 900K. So now if you see that my lease liability by the end of year one, it has already become 1.9 million in my books. It is already 1.9 million in my books. Then comes the next year, which is 31st, 12, 2021. Here my second rent is due next year. And this second rent I have to pay. And I would say debit my rent expense, or you call it, um, okay, you use the same term here. Debit rent expense. I would actually I would say lease rental. Debit lease rental. And credit would be now how much is lease rental? That is 900. And how much I have told them to pay them cash or bank because he is now expecting from me. He's not an accountant. He does not know what I've been doing here. And he has got no concern with this thing. He says that I'm giving you 1 million now. From next one year, you will start giving me 1 million every year. So he is actually expecting from me 1 million, which I have to give him. And here I would say debit lease liability. 100,000. So now if you see that lease liability is going to be debited by 100,000. And now how many years do I have in my, so my total lease liability was 1 million, this one, plus 900, this one, which makes me 1.9 million. Out of 1.9 million, 100 I already have debited in this year. So one year was this, remaining I've got 19 more years, year two to year 20, 19 years I have. And this transaction, I'm going to repeat every year, every year, for the next 19 years. So in 2022, again, lease liability 100 million decrease. So in the first year, I created a lease liability of 1.9 million. Then every year, I will decrease it by 100, 100, 100. And in 19 years period time, it will become zero. So this is like the concept of your reverse, uh, reverse premium, your concept of rent free uh, period and creation of your lease liability in the beginning. And then you remove it from your financials every year, like 100K. So there is a difference of 100K. Now, if you see these numbers, they exactly match. Exactly these numbers, they match. I've got, I have to write off 1.9 million. 1 million was my reverse premium. And then whatever was uh, 2 million, I have to write off. And this is how you are going to write off. Any question? Your rental expense effectively is 900,000. You are paying cash in 1 million. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. I think the, uh, referring back to the first year, the, the uh, 
um, rental, lease rental entry, the debit, instead of 900, it's supposed to be 1000, right? No, my lease rental is 900. Because the first year you'll be getting a uh, incentive of 100,000, uh, uh, which is received in cash. That's the first entry. The second entry, the first year, you'll make an entry of rent outstanding, but you'll not be paying it actually. I'm not paying it, so I'm not paying cash. Yeah. So I yeah, need but to first calculate how much is my rental. So my rental is 900K. I mean, the contract says 1 million, but the effective my effective rent is only 900K because the first year I'm not paying any rent. So out of 20 years, I'm only paying rent for 19 years. Okay. So I'm, I, I, I make a saving of 1 million from there. So it's a 20 years contract, but I have to pay only 19 million. Out of 19 million, 1 million he has given me advance cash. So what is going out from my pocket to get this property for 20 years is 18 million. So I'm going to pay effectively 18 million over a period of 20 years. So it means that my annual rent is only 900K. I should be taking into my PNL 900K as my. I, I, I thought of adding one more entry. Okay, that, that, so you're clubbing it as two, two entry to one. It's fine. It's, it's, it's clear to me. So yeah. I actually, what I'm doing that I'm spreading this discount over 20 years time period. How much? We have got the benefit. The benefit yeah. for us is actually two million, right? Yeah. And this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this two million total benefit, like one million in cash, one million in in, in, in rent free period. This two million cash, I am actually spreading over twenty years, which means that every annual benefit is hundred k. So when he says that you have one million lease rental, hundred k is my benefit. Only nine hundred k should go to my PNL. Okay, spreading it over twenty years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And Thank you. Your lease liability will also finish. So at the end of year one. You have this now. There is one more question that if you have got this lease liability, so let's suppose that we understood that my end of year one, end of year one, my lease liability is how much? My lease liability is 1.9 million, right? These two amounts, correct? But you have to show it as non current liability and current liability. So you would be actually not showing 1.9 million. You should be saying non current liability and current liability. 100 will be under current, 1.8 million will be under non current because this 100 will be written off. In the next 12 months so this 1.9 million of total lease liability end of year one because if it is end of year one i need to prepare my financials although i'm not paying lease rental but i have to prepare my financials so in my balance sheet i would say that i already have assumed a total liability of 1.9 million and if i split it like this because i'm splitting i'm paying off liability i'm reversing 100k every every year so 100,000 will be settled within the next 12 months so i put it as current liability and the remaining 1.8 million will be reversed in in the later next 18 years so you need to again split it the lease liability in current and non current am i clear yeah and there is no interest calculation over here how much is interest within the current liability that is not needed here so this was one uh, scenario because i know that uh, you would be facing this thing where you have you might have reverse premium you might have rent free periods sometimes they give you rent free period for one year sometimes you get rent free period for three months even for six months i mean you take some office it's very uh, rare imagine that you are a bank okay and in any commercial place you take this property and you need to go and you know renovate it according to your needs i'm 100 sure that the commercial department which is negotiating with the contract they are talking to the landlord that see i if i take this property on rent now i need to do this renovation we need to make our cabins and cubicles and stuff like that we have to put some heating lighting ventilation system three months is rent free period and if i see it it's very normal it exactly happens like this and you've got here twenty thousand dollars per month rent three months it's a benefit of sixty thousand and that 60,000 should be split over the lease period. So you would calculate how much is your total you know, year. You are signing it for five years. Every year there are 12 months. You are paying 20,000. So how much is your 1.2 million? Your total lease rental is 1.2 million. Subtract the 60K from here and then find out your how much total payment you are going to make 1140. And that 1140 divided with 60 months, like five years, 12 months. And then you will get your monthly lease rental, the correct amount. If you should be accounting for this thing. If maybe there are some people who are not accounting for this, what they do, they do not put anything in year in month one, month two, month three, they show zero rent, zero rent, zero rent, which is not correct. Every month you should show rent or every year you should show rent with your discount adjustment. Got it? Okay. So now let's do some questions which I picked up. 